I played every Spongebob horror game that I could find, and it was chaos. There were really good games, really bad games, scary moments, rage moments, and even a redemption arc, and everything in between. I spent over 4 hours playing almost 20 Spongebob themed horror games, and this is what happened. Coming to this, I had no idea what to expect. I just donned my Spongebob gear and loaded up some indie games. First of which was a week at Spongebob's abandoned funhouse. Okay, disclaimer. I vowed to only play one Five Nights at Freddy's inspired Spongebob game because if I had downloaded every single Five Nights at the Krusty Krab or Spongebob Nights at Freddy's, I would still be streaming right now. There were that many. So this is kind of a stand-in for the entire subgenre of Spongebob horror. In this game, you're working at an abandoned Spongebob themed funhouse where the animatronic version of Spongebob characters are trying to kill you. On the first night, you only deal with Squidward, who you give an electric shock to, and on night two, it's just Squidward, Spongebob, who you need to hide from, and Plankton, who kills you if you hide for too long. Alright, new game. Take a shot every time I say the word Spongebob. I'm barely into this script, and it's already getting ridiculous. Okay, sorry, back to the game. This game got me killed a few times, but overall wasn't that difficult. It also stopped after night two. I guess the developer never finished it. I'm gonna give it like a 4 out of 10. Okay, so next up was Goofy Goobers. It started off with Spongebob crashing his boat, which he shouldn't actually be driving because he doesn't have a license, but whatever. And at this mechanic shop, he's unable to pay, so the mechanic tells him to clean this place for him to pay for the boat. That place ends up being Goofy Goobers. We clean up some leftover Gooberberry sunrises and some beer bottles, when we notice that Goofy Goober is no longer on stage. As we try to leave the facility, he attacks. We wake up in a room that we need to escape, and honestly up to this point this game was kinda awesome. But then came this chase scene. Call it a skill issue, call me bad, I don't care. This part was unnecessarily hard, I died over and over and over and over. Eventually I made it past, and then got stuck on this ledge. So yeah, I just, I just closed the game. My blood was literally boiling. Overall. 6 out of 10. Would have been way higher without the chasing. Up next, Krusty Zombies. To be honest, there isn't really a ton to say about this game. It's literally Call of Duty Zombies, but at the Krusty Krab. I mean, there was a mystery box, perks, pack-a-punch. It was just zombies. Definitely not scary, but was really enjoyable and just the kind of stress relief I needed after that last game. 6.5 out of 10. After that, it was time to load up Krusty's Cellar. You load in, and Mr. Krabs tells you that he accidentally left the secret formula in a chocolate bar in the basement of the Krusty Krab, and he of course needs us to get it. So into the cellar we go, where there are a ton of lovely young lady who want some mm -hmm. chocolate. Once we find what we're after, we run into the biggest chocolate lover of them all. <laughs> we escape him, return the formula to Mr. K, and that's it. Simple, not really scary. 5 out of 10. Good job. Real quick, if you're all enjoying this video so far, definitely consider subscribing. Helps me out a ton, and you get notified when I post or go live, which is actually when I play these games. Okay, back to the video. So, the next game on this list is Mr. Krabs and the Flying Dutchman. In this game, you play as Mr. Krabs looking for the Dutchman's treasure in this maze while also trying to avoid him. I'm gonna be real, this game is not great. You constantly have to hear Mr. Krabs walking, which I'm sure you've noticed by now, is really annoying. Let's just, let's just cut that out. So, you're going through this maze, and once you find one, you move at half your normal speed. This game is just frustrating, it's also not scary. 2 out of 10, because at least it's playable. You'll see what I mean later. Okay, so now onto one of the top performers of the night. This game is called Plankton's Plan. You start off by seeing Plankton walking up to Karen with this mechanical Mr. Krabs right in front of him. We press a button to launch him and get berated by our wife. Not that one! What the fuck is wrong with you? I can't even catch a break as a thousand foot tall monster! I don't want to hear it. It can't get more simpler than that, you fucking piece of shit. Hey! I went to college! And do I look like I give two fucks about your college, huh? Is it even true that you got your degree? You are a dumb loser I married out of pity oh and a loser I now stuck with God. for the rest of my life. Mr. Krabs is a better looking man anyway. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> wow, that was brutal. Let's see what's happening at the Krusty Krab. Gotta make a Krabby Patty while Mr. K is greened out. We add the special ingredient, serve the patty, which is when we see the chum bucket explode. So we do what we must. We steal a cop's gun and check out the situation. Immediately, we lose our pistol, so we need a new gun. Luckily, this AR is just chilling in a vent ripe for the picking. We destroy some robots and have a showdown with this giant evil robot crabs. After shooting it and blowing it up with propane, we finally take it down. Or so we think. What in the flying fuck is that thing? Oh, get take cover! Now, this game wasn't actually scary, but it was awesome, so 8 out of 10. We followed this game up with another absolute banger. Sinister Squidward. After so many years of being degraded by his boss and getting tormented by Spongebob, Squidward finally snaps. He kills Mr. Krabs and escapes to Spongebob's pineapple, where he's holding Spongebob and Patrick hostage. That's when Sandy steps in. We head to the pineapple and try to save our friends. We need to sneak around as Squidward is roaming the halls. We get this crowbar from the bathroom, which helps us get into the kitchen, where Patrick is being, uh, yeah. So we turn off the power and free him. Finally, I'm free. We did it. Circumcised again. We then very slowly have to lead him to the exit. Before he escapes, he lets us know that he last saw Squidward take Spongebob into the living room. We investigate and find this hidden passage behind a bookshelf. This leads us to the second floor, where we find Spongebob attached to this machine, which starts trying to tear him in half. Sponge, no! We break the machine and free Spongebob, which is when Squidward comes in. <laughs> Spongebob, you ruined my plans again. This will be the last time. It's time for me to die. No! Didn't have to be like this, Squid. Didn't have to be like this. This game was fantastic. 9 out of 10. Alright, now it's on to Spongebob Killer Pants. This one is quick. We're cleaning up the Krusty Krab at night, which is when we hear a strange noise. We head to the basement to check it out where Spongebob Killer Pants is waiting. Diffic, and that's it. Short, sweet, to the point. 6.5 out of 10. Okay, this next game is really weird. This is Spongebob Slender Pants. As you may have guessed, it's slender, but with a Spongebob theme. My initial impression of this game was that it wasn't very good. You have a night vision camera that makes your flashlight useless, but you need it because there's no ambient light, so you can't see anything with just your flashlight. You also outrun Slendy Pants, so there's no actual danger while you collect these spatulas. But that's just the default map. There are a lot of maps in this game, so I checked out this one called Bikini Bottom Reject Facility. There's enough light on this map that you can actually just use your flashlight, so I set a rule of no night vision. And this was legitimately really creepy. You have this disfigured Patrick chasing you that made me get jump scared. I was impressed. This game was honestly really fun and maybe the scariest of all these games. Super awesome, but only when you play the correct map and artificially limit yourself. For those reasons, 8 out of 10. Okay, time to speedrun through some of these. Spongebob Casa Remastered. I have no idea what's going on in this game, it was just blocks. 2 out of 10. Spongebob Horror. Looked funny, but was unplayable since the AI was broken. But also try and remember this game. 1 out of 10. Sponge Devil. It, it didn't launch. 0 out of 10. That wasn't a great stretch, but it's okay. We're back with definitely one of my favorites from the night. This is Squidward's prediction. You're playing as Patrick going over to Spongebob's for movie night. You find a note saying he's in the basement dealing with an infestation and help yourself to some Krabby Patties. That's when things start to feel weird. Doors opening, lights flickering, meat piles just everywhere. And then we see something terrible. Squidward killed Mr. Krabs. We try to escape, but we can't go out the front, so we flee to the basement. Down here, we need to avoid Squidward and find three keys to escape. Not gonna lie, this was one of the only times out of all these games my heart was legitimately pounding. 
It was surprisingly intense, but we get all the keys in escape. Bravo. 8 out of 10. Next up is a game called Squidward's Suicide. Weird side note, I think it's hilarious how Squidward is the villain in most of these horror games. Everyone just expects him to snap. Okay, so this game is weird. Like, really weird. You play as just a normal person and enter an episode. The first part of this game is awful. You, you have like 30 key cards and you have to just keep trying them to see which one works. It's dumb. But things do get better. You fall down this hole but get saved by 4 inches of water, Minecraft style. Then you need to sneak past a very wobbly Squidward. You then enter this area where it seems like you need to visit 4 scenes. The first of which is Squidward at a clarinet concert where he gets booed off stage. We end up in another water area, so we drain the water and avoid Squidward again, and head to the next scene. The crying scene. Here we see, well, Squidward crying, probably from getting booed off stage. Boo. You suck. Boo. Get off the stage. Sneak past him a few more times, and then we have to escape Squidward chasing us. We then are back in the living room, where we listen to a phone call while Squidward stares at us from behind a door. And that's the end of this beta. It was weird, but had some good moments. I'll say like a 6 out of 10. Alright, we're almost to the end now. Only 4 more. Alright, so we have Nightmare at the Krusty Krab, which was surprisingly another Call of Duty Zombies clone. Except this time, we are killing a never-ending horde of hash-slinging slashers. There looks to be a ton of areas we can go, like the Chum Bucket, the Bus, and Sandy's Rocket. But what really catches my eye is this mysterious green portal. And I can't lie, there was no way I wasn't going in this. And this led us to the booze cruise ending. I don't even know what just happened, but I'm driving along this road listening to copyrighted music with a beer in my hand. I give it a out of 10. Okay, so this next game is just called Spongebob. And we're running from this thing for the whole game. We need to get three gas canisters, get the key to the lift, turn on the generator, and go down to the next floor, where this thing is chasing us. This game is more disturbing than scary, but unfortunately there was no way I was going to finish it. Sorry. 5 out of 10. Our penultimate game is Bob Esponja de Terror. Or Spongebob of Terror, I think. Yeah, this game is in Spanish, so I had to manifest all the high school Spanish classes I could in order to learn the controls. There's this camera where you can watch Spongebob go around, and we have a couple of door codes and keys we need to escape. This game is unfortunately pretty unplayable, just because the AI is far too difficult. You can't progress because you can't go two feet without Spongebob catching you. I like the concept, but poor execution. 4 out of 10. Alright, it's time. The moment you've all been waiting for. Okay, I'm done. SpongeBob Horror Rehydrated. This is a remake of a horror game we played earlier. The game with the broken AI that was unplayable with updated graphics, I guess, and an actual functioning enemy. I was not expecting a redemption arc for SpongeBob horror games. Yet here we are. This game was actually pretty fun. Our goal was to cook a Krabby Patty for Patrick, bring Mr. Krabs the formula, check Squidward's clarinet, and take a dump. All while avoiding Robo Krabs. It wasn't that difficult or scary, but playing this made me legitimately happy that this person was able to fix their game. 11 out of 10, just for the effort. Well, that was all of them. That was every single SpongeBob horror game. This was a ton of fun, and I definitely want to do more like this in the future. If you guys have any idea, then definitely let me know down in the comments. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely check out more from me. Should be a few videos on the screen now. See you all in the next one. Peace.